Good day. My name is Park Ranger Michael Callahan, and welcome to this segment of History from St. Paul's. Today, in conjunction with our October commemoration of the Battle of Pell's Point, we will explore the life of Captain William Glanville Eveline, a British Army officer who died of wounds suffering the battle, shown in uniform with a high collar in this portrait. William Glanville Eveline was born in Parklow, County Wicklow, Ireland, sometime in early 1742. His father, the Reverend William Eveline, was a minister for the local area. Although the young William Eveline was born in Ireland, his father maintained his roots to the remainder of the Eveline family, which had their seat at Watton House in Surrey, England. Although not a part of the aristocracy, if Flame were considered to be a component of the English gentry class, the world we make term comfortably well off. As well as only land, the family also was involved in the production of gunpowder, which helped to increase the financial standing. One of William's forebears, Sir John Eveline, shown in this portrait holding a book, was a noted diarist and author. By 1760, the year William turned 18, Britain had been engaged in the Seven Years' War for four years, and had sent a number of regiments to Germany to support her ally, Frederick the Great of Prussia, against the armies of France and her allies. Through family connections, William Eveline obtained a commission as an ensign in the 50th Foot, an infantry regiment. At this time, most officers' commissions in the infantry and cavalry were secured through purchase, and a number were granted through influence. This may have been the case with young William, his father may have had limited financial means. William serves with the 50th in several actions in Germany until the war's conclusion, when the 50th is reduced, and is placed on half pay, a type of semi-retirement. He resides in Ireland with his parents, living the life of a country gentleman, and plays a point to lieutenant in the 4th Regiment of Foot, represented by this portrait of a red-coated British officer with his musket leaning against a rock, with his dog also shown in the painting. By 1773, the 4th is stationed in England. He was alerted for duty in the 13 colonies, but there's much discord with the Crown's policies. At times, this discord turns to violence and the home government makes a decision to increase the number of troops in the colonies in an effort to suppress the violence and stabilize the situation. The 4th reached Boston in June of 1774. William is now a captain and commands a battalion company in his regiment. The situation in Boston and its environs slowly worsened, and by April of 1775, the colonists are in an open rebellion against the Crown. Companies of the 4th Foot participated in fighting in Lexington, Concord Bridge, and the subsequent fighting withdrawal of the British troops back to Boston. William and his company are sent to relieve the main British force, and participate in the heavy fighting during the withdrawal phase of the operation. Represented by this crude drawing of many small figures set in a rural landscape with smoke rising from burning houses. The British withdraw from Boston in March of 1776 and proceed to Halifax, Nova Scotia where the 4th Foot becomes part of a larger army commanded by General William Howe. In the late spring, Howe's army departs Halifax and lands on Staten Island. In August, the British force attacked Washington's army, and the Continentals suffered a devastating defeat at the Battle of Brooklyn. Washington retreats to Manhattan with Howe's forces in pursuit. In October, the 4th Foot conducts an amphibious landing with a larger force at Throg's Neck in the Bronx. In 18 October, in an attempt to cut the supply routes to Washington's army from Connecticut, British Grenadiers and Light Infantry land at Pell's Point on the Bronx shoreline. Represented by this modern photograph, shown a landing point on the shoreline of Pelham Bay, with Throg's Neck Bridge visible in the distance. At this time, William commands the Light Infantry Company of the 4th. As the Grenadiers and Light Infantry move inland, they are met by a Continental Brigade commanded by Colonel John Glover engaged the British force from behind a series of stone walls. Early in the action, William receives three wounds while leading his company. The most serious wound is to his right leg. As he lays wounded, a Continental from Colonel Shepard's regiment jumps over the wall and takes Eveline's hat and canteen. This incident results in a well-known local legend handed down through the years, captured in this colorful painting which is shown. William's men recover him. He is evacuated to New York City. The surgeons inform him that his right leg must be amputated. 
represented by this minor illustration of the surge in treating a soldier of the Revolutionary War period. William refuses, and his condition worsens. By the time he agrees to the amputation, the procedure takes place, it is too late. Captain William Glanville Eveline dies on 6 November 1776, and it is believed that he rests in an unmarked grave in Trinity Churchyard. Gerald Harrell marks that the loss of such a gallant officer was much regretted. William leaves his small estate to his female servant, who as some speculated he may have been rom romantically involved with. But that is a story for another day. Thanks for joining us for History from St. Paul's. We hope to see you again soon.